Hello and welcome back. We are in day 12 of this Mule Advanced Training. In this lecture, we are going to understand very important topics related to certification exam. Mostly these topics are theoretical, but uh, there might be some questions on this topic. So I'm covering this in detail. Please go through it carefully. So here in this uh, lecture, we will discuss about how to identify various any point security options. We'll understand about what is this any point edge security actually. And we'll clearly understand about uh, what are the differences between edge policies, API policies, etc. Mostly theoretical topics, but it will help you in clearing the certification exam. So here we'll identify any point security options. So earlier we understood that API policies can be defined in API manager. And once we configure a policy in API manager, those policies will get applied to your applications. At runtime, these policies are enforced directly into Mule application, right? But any point security offers other types of policies that can be enforced at edges of your runtime fabric, not at your API level or not at your runtime level, at the edges of runtime fabric. So what do I mean by this? Let us see. So when it comes to any point edge policies, see, uh, I'll just copy this diagram. Okay, so if you see here, this is the any point platform and here is the runtime fabric. So as you remember, runtime fabric internally uses Docker and Kubernetes and your applications will be running inside Kubernetes, right? So let's assume these are the applications running inside their own runtimes. Whenever you configure a API policy using API manager, right? So those policies are applied at your application level, but some policies called as edge policies are not at the application level, but they are at the runtime fabric level, right? So those are called as edge policies. So runtime fabric is like one edge, the whole, whole containers managed by runtime fabric. We call it as one edge at high level and these policies are applied at the edge right so that's why they are called as edge security policies so any point security edge security is a runtime fabric solution for perimeter level security perimeter perimeter means what surrounding that this is a perimeter right so a security which we apply at the perimeter level, we call it as perimeter security and any point edge security offers perimeter security. Any point security is a standalone pro product deployed, remember, outside of mule runtimes as part of this ingress traffic for runtime fabric. So whenever traffic is coming into runtime fabric at the load balancer level or we call something called as ingress traffic which is coming in is called as ingress. So in Kubernetes there are something called as ingress controllers which are responsible for taking the traffic in to Kubernetes. If I want to apply some policies, of course, I can apply some policies at this ingress controller level. So this any point edge security is applied at the ingress controllers of Kubernetes or runtime fabric. They are not at the API level or application level. So these edge security policies are applied to inbound requests after they are sent from the client, but before they arrive at the runtime fabric deployed application 
endpoints. That means even before the API manager def, uh, defined policies are applied. So here are the API manager defined policies at the application level. Even before this, these policies are applied at the ingress level or at the load balancer level. Okay. So where are the edge policies applied? Applied in the edge gateway server. So actually we call uh, these controllers as we can have something called the edge gateway servers in Kubernetes, right? They are applied, we can say at the edge gateway server, right? Where are API policies applied? API policies are applied at either the API implementation level or API proxy app, right? And single edge policy can apply to many API instances. But a single API policy defined at API manager level applies to exactly one deployment, one instance. Okay. So these are the features provided by any point security, edge security. Those features include edge proxy, a proxy at the edge level. And one important thing, SSL termination can be done at this level only. So if you are using HTTPS SSL, the SSL communication termination can be done at edge level only. That is also provided by this one. Certificate management, etc. can be configured through this security, edge security. And various content security attacks also, content security policies also can be configured. Quality of service, uh, denial of service, etc. are the policies supported by edge security. Don't worry, these all topics I'm going to discuss next. Okay. So firstly, what is this content attack prevention policy? This policy prevents malicious content from reaching the service. So there is a policy called as content attack prevention policy. If you configure this, if you configure that policy at the edge security level, it prevents the malicious content from reaching the service. What it will do? It will inspect the incoming messages patterns. It will, it will identify SQL injections, XPath injections, etc. And it can also apply message size or attachment size cannot cross a particular limit. So like that we can configure a policy called as content attack prevention cap policy. So let's assume that there is a message coming in which contains any of these violations like SQL injection violation or uh, message size is crossing some limit etc. This policy will generate a cap violation. Right? Okay. Just remember. Next. What is this quality of service? Again, this is very important for examination. I have seen some questions on it. This policy manages resource consumption for a user-defined resource such as REST API or SOAP API. Example, uh, example of what this policy can track is what is the request data rate? At which rate the requests are coming? Raw request data rate. Response rate, failed response rate, message buffer utilization. These all uh, can be tracked by using this quality of service. There is a question related to this. Remember, request data rate can be tracked by using this policy. Response data rate can be tracked using this policy. And all the policies mentioned earlier, that means the cap policy or QS quality of service policy, all the policies mentioned earlier provide information to DOS. DOS is nothing but denial of service policy. Right? So whenever any of the violation is identified by using cap or QIS, they intimate this denial of service policy. What all we can do is we can configure an alert to send message to administrators 
that a DOS event denial of quality has occurred or block interval rejects requests from a client within a defined period of time. So we can configure such that a particular client messages will be blocked. So any messages coming from the client will be rejected for an administrator defined period of time or we can configure a client can be blocked forever also. If some uh, QoS violation is done or cap violation is done. Okay. Restrict the rate at which it will accept the messages from a client. So let's assume that for some particular clients, we don't want to accept more than 100 requests per second. Right. So we can restrict the rate at which it will accept the messages from a client. That also can be done by using this denial of service. Right. Or else shape forever. That means restrict the rate at which it will accept messages from a client based on administrator defined rate unless administrator removes the restriction. Okay. So these are the possibilities which we can do with DOS. Hey, remember as an architect, you just need to know what all policies are there and what can help us. But how to configure these services? It will be taken care by the platform administrator. So I am not covering how to configure this. And remember, these all are possible only in runtime fabric. So if you remember, I have told you for runtime fabric, there is a UI called as ops manager UI operation center sorry ops center ui so in the ops center ui of runtime fabric you will have some configuration to configure all these values like uh, how to configure alerts block interval etc this can be configured through ops center of runtime manager so we are not going into that uh, level that is the job of an administrator but we should know what all are possible right and one more interesting thing is tokenization. So this is one of the edge security feature. We can configure uh, edge security such that whenever some information like credit card is coming, what it can do? Instead of passing the credit card number to the application, it will replace the credit card number with a token value, right? So let me explain you. Let's assume that uh, I am writing an application and my application is getting a request which contains credit card information. What my API implementation can do, it can store the credit card information in database if it gets original credit card details. But is it not a breach of security? A database administrator can see your credit card information, right? So if we configure a tokenization as an edge security. So whenever requests are coming that will come to this ingress controller managed by edge security. And what this will do is if there is any field like credit card and if we configured what it will do is it will generate a token for credit card and internally what this will be doing is you can see this diagram what this will be doing is it will be maintaining something called the token vault. I'll just copy paste this diagram here. So whenever a credit card is coming from the end user, what will happen? Um, any credit card or any information, secure information like SSN is coming. We don't want to actually give the SSN value to the application. So if we configure tokenization, what will happen? The original value will be stored in a token vault against a token value. So what is the SSN in this case? SSN, sorry. SSN is this one, social security number. We don't want to give, expose the original social security number. For this, a token is generated and for the application, token is given. So for the application, it will get the token value. It does not know the actual value. This is true in case of a credit card or anything, any secure information. 
so our application will use this value but whenever my logic has to get the actual assertion again it can query the token vault by passing the token number and it can get the actual value so the point is if my application itself gets gets the actual value and if it stores in database it is a security breach instead in my database this token will be stored and for this token what is the actual value it can be queried from the token vault so like that the edge security provides us with tokenization tokenization is a process of turning a meaningful data such as an account number into a random string of characters called as token that has no meaning if breached right so remember this this point remember this point uh, just pause the video and see this again tokens serve as references to original data but cannot be used to reverse engineer those values that means if somebody gets the token value by seeing this token value somebody cannot actually get the original value like if you encrypt somebody can decrypt right if they know the key so it's not like that by seeing the token just the token nobody can get the actual value okay so another one is you can configure encryption as an edge security feature what it what you can do you can configure some fields like email the value of email is encrypted so whenever a message comes like this email is encrypted phone number is encrypted so you can configure such edge encryption policy or you can configure edge data masking policy like in this case if you see the phone number is masked account number also is masked so you can configure all this policies right and uh as i told you tokenization uses a database called as token vault this is a token vault it's a database for the edge service it stores the relationship between the sensitive value and the token right okay in any point security in runtime fabric actually any point security implements vaultless tokenization for runtime fabric so in runtime fabric actually there is nothing like a vault you can just see this diagram i'll copy paste okay actually in runtime fabric there is a service called as tokenization service right so whenever data is coming in the tokenization policy what it will do it will give the original value to the tokenization service and gets a token gives a token to the application then uh whenever my application needs the original value what it will do it will ask the tokenization policy to get the value this tokenization policy will talk to tokenization service and get the actual value and give it right so in runtime fabric there is nothing like it vault there is a service called as tokenization service okay so let us evaluate some uh, mule application security risks and propose some solutions one threat consider anyone who can send untrusted data to mule application so some client is sending some untrusted data to our application what the this type of attack can be found in db operations such as execute script or execute ddl so what the client can do is they can send some untrusted data and if i am executing a script by using those values sent in the message it may result in executing some unwanted queries so attackers can send malicious data in the query text which can alter data integrity and perform unintended comments on database so attackers will send some data that's called as attack right so uh, they can attack 
or application by sending some unwanted or untrusted data right so how to prevent what you can do is you can use validation module operations and validate the incoming data before you actually perform the actual task like executing a script on database etc you can validate the incoming data that is one thing and whenever you are firing any queries use bind variables in sql instead of directly manipulating the sql or apply schema validations using api kit router so that the incoming schema will be validated properly so you can avoid this risk of actually uh, getting untrusted data by taking care like this using validation module binding variables or using schema validation at api kit router and one more threat is stealing the account credentials how it is possible if you are storing the passwords as plain text in your application you are using some authentication provider who is storing plain text passwords right so this can be found this this kind of attack can be found when connectors when passwords session ids and credentials are sent on unencrypted connections so in your application if you are using some connectors which are sending passwords in unencrypted connections then this is possible and sometimes you want your application is not invalidating the oauth context that means in your applications you are not your oauth sessions are not invalidated properly so in this kind of scenarios we will be able to see a threat called as stealing of account credentials so what we need to do for preventing store the credentials using hashing or encryption never store plain credentials use secure properties file for customer hosted deployments you know in your applications how to write secure configuration properties right same thing use safely hidden properties for cloud hub deployments so whenever you are doing any cloud hub deployment you can configure properties right let me just go there i'll go to my runtime manager yep so i am in runtime manager let me show you one application which i have i'll click on manage application and here in properties right let's assume that there is a property of type password when i give the value i don't want the original value to be seen here it should be something like star 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 or masked right i'll tell you or or you know already how to do it right so what you have to do if there is one property which should appear as star star stars in runtime manager hope you remember or quickly i'll tell you in this case every application will have a file called as mule dash artifacts dot json here you need to write a property called as secured properties and its value should be an array of all the property names which should be secured so once you package and deploy an application with this such kind of mule dash artifact dot json whenever you have a key with the same name the value will be masked so like that you have to make sure that um, you are safely hiding the properties for cloud up deployments right and also use some secure connections like https or ssl etc for secure connections and make sure that you invalidate the sessions promptly okay and one more thing consider one more threat is consider anyone who can gain access to sensitive data at rest or transit so if in your application if you are having sensitive data how to actually secure them this kind of threat is found in application properties 
attacker can read system credentials which can cause any zero day attack for your organization right they can actually get your system credentials that is one one thing and persistent store such as object store if object store is not private remember some connectors when you are there are connectors every connector can have its own private object store so if you are not using a private object store for sensitive information then also this attack can be possible so wherever possible use a private object store don't use a common or default object store right and also uh, security certificate store if not protected the att attacker can have access to your unintended services so you have to make sure that your certificate store the place where you are storing your certificates is secure right uh, these are the ways you use secure properties for your properties use encryption or hashing for sensitive data these are the ways you can actually uh, make sure that you don't expose sensitive data right and one more thing is some vulnerable components and libraries can be identified so if you are using mule that means you are using java right some vul vulnerable libraries might be there so make sure that whenever you are using libraries those libraries are trusted libraries untested libraries can exploit your application or server or host like take an example there is one framework called the apache struts and there was some vulnerability in apache struts library which caused the remote attacker to execute some arbitrary code on server so make sure that whenever you are using third party libraries they are tested and they are from a trusted source and also make sure um, that you use uh tls you don't use tls 1.0 actually it is identified that tls 1.0 is open to middleman attack so how to prevent this kind of attacks you can use uh, tls 1.2 or 1.1 and you use approved enterprise libraries only and in your application you have to perform static and dynamic code analysis of java sources so how to secure application properties you already know you can use secure properties config in your application i hope you remember how uh, i have secured by using secured properties config so what you can do you can use secure properties configuration and uh, use a key for encryption then you have to store encrypted values in the yaml file for some properties wherever encrypted value is there it has to be inside exclamation and square bracket so it will identify okay this is a encrypted property and it will decrypt so wherever possible use it secure properties okay and also as i told you um, whenever you are deploying your applications to cloud up you can configure a key called as secure properties you can see secure properties here we have configured encryption dot key as secure property so whenever you are seeing in the ui your say encryption dot key is appearing as dots right and how to pass a value of key encryption key whenever you are running mule server standalone you can use hyphen m hyphen d encryption dot key is equals to the value or you can set from the operating system environment variable or you can set it inside wrapper.conf if you are using on premise this is the key to be this is how it has to be configured if you are using cloud up you can set it in the runtime manager console's property right so how to secure data in transit instead of using http use https wherever possible use secure protocols like https ssl or tls okay and in your application whenever you want to encrypt or decrypt at the application level you can use mule cryptography module 
and it supports various Java cryptography architecture. It provides various operations for symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption, signing data, etc. And in data view, you can use a functions present in this crypto module. Inside your code, if you want to do encryption or decryption, you can use this. So that's about how to secure your applications and servers.